Now let's get to our first topic of discussion in a bid to tackle poverty and hunger across the country. The federal government in 2016 established the National Social Investment Program. The list of programs under the NSIP focuses on uh, ensuring a more equitable distribution of resources to vulnerable populations, including children, youth, and women. Since its inception, uh, these programs combined have supported more than 4 million beneficiaries uh, countrywide through a fair and transparent process supported by the Ministry of Budget and National Planning and other notable MDAs with aligned goals. Now, with nine months to the end of the second, uh, of course, and the final term in office of President Momodou Buhari, uh, led administration, uh, has approved also a bill to fight against poverty, a formal legal backing, as well as institutionalize the National Social Investment Program. Well, let's talk more about this. And joining us from Abuja via Zoom is the National Coordinator of the National Social Investment Program, NSIP, Engina Umar Binder. Thank you so much. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Yes, I look at it now since 2006, NSIP been established to tackle hunger and, of course, poverty across the line. Take us through your giant strides, your challenges, and where we are at the moment. Well, thank you very much. This is a very important question. You see, um, back in 2015, when this administration came in, the president very creatively recognized the challenges of poverty to this country. It is poverty that is actually causing all the issues that you know, mainly. And uh, he commissioned a very strong evidence-based um, strategy to evolve the program. And in 2016, the NSIP commenced as, for the first time in the history of this country, a program that is evidence-based, a program that is focused on very realistic sectors of the economy, a program that has very strategic focus on the beneficiaries to ensure that the issue of poverty is really and meaningfully tackled. So the NSIP, uh, composed of four very unique clusters, um, came into, into, into implementation in 2016. First cluster, the Empower. The Empower is not really Nigerian power or whatever. Empower is a brand, a brand like, you know, empowerment. So uh, what, 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 what the cluster of empowerment mean is that it is a, 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 a cluster that is focusing on empowering young people particularly um, and women with skills, competencies, so that they can be able to deploy uh, those skills uh, to be employed, to have jobs, to create wealth, and by implication, lower poverty in our, in our country. Uh, it has many components that will take us another day to actually review. Uh, but I'm happy to report to Nigerians that since inception, as we speak, we have actually directly affected 1.5 million young people, including girls, people with disabilities that have ability to, 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 to participate, and so on and so forth. The second cluster is the GIP, Government uh, Enterprise and Empowerment Program, which is one of the most creative micro loan facility ever launched in the whole continent. This is a small loan going to the poor and vulnerable. It has no interest rate. It has no collateral, meaning that the implementers must make sure that the delivery is quick and then the utilization of the loan is effective, literally empowering people to be more productive so that they can be able to pay. I'm happy to report to Nigerians that as we speak, uh, the second uh, batch of the GIP is being implemented, literally transferring loans to nearly 1.5 million beneficiaries, but the previous GIP has probably 2.6 to 3 million beneficiaries. All of them have been empowered to participate in the economy productively. The third arm of the NSIP is the National Home Growth School Feeding Program. The president and his team recognize that the, 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 the out-of-school children syndrome in our country is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there must be a strategy on actually how to improve the enrollment into government schools so that poor children can actually go to school and then deploying the feeding strategy, giving one quality meal to children in schools became very, very apparent. This is experience from all over the world. And I'm happy to report to Nigerians as we speak, we're feeding nearly 10 million children nationwide and it's working. It is not just the feeding though, you know, you have to hire cooks, therefore we are empowering rural community women 
to actually participate in cooking and so on and so forth. The materials, we emphasize that you have to utilize the local materials within the communities to feed the children. Therefore, power, farmers are empowered, processors are empowered, and the whole thing is just hustling and bustling to uh, unleash the energy of entrepreneurship in our community. The final cluster for the NSIP is the conditional cash transfer. The president said, look, there are houses in this country that literally have recognized that there's so many elements for vulnerability. The woman is a widow, the, 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 the children are out of school, and so on and so forth. And we have very, very strategic a process of identifying these houses nationwide into a database called the National Social Register. And it is out of this social register that we mine the data, and as we speak, we are actually delivering um, grants of 5,000 Naira per household to 2 million houses. And I have to report to Nigerians that the National Social Register now has something like 12 point something million households with a total of 40 to 50 million Nigerians already documented in our databases. Uh, but the best part of the whole thing is that the driver, the implementer, the person who is moving these programs very smoothly, very fairly, very transparently is our honorable minister. You know, they normally say ladies are the best at doing most things, particularly social issues. Here comes the, the minister, Hajia Sadi Omar Farouk. She is very dedicated, she's working hard, bending backwards to ensure that we all work. And so putting all this together, I have to report to Nigerians that you can tell my excitement to be part of this program. And it is working, it is reducing poverty, it is engaging Nigerians, it is catching the poor and vulnerable, and uh, uh, it is, is, uh, is something that, in my opinion, as one of the key legacies of this administration, and the president and his vice president and the honorable minister, possibly with some of us, have to be congratulated for pushing this program with the learning processes and that we're moving. But as you said, it may not sound all Uhuru, like, like I'm putting it. There are some challenges, challenges of funding, challenges of partnership, challenges of ensuring that insecurity is stopping you to reach the nook and crannies of this country. There are other people trying to politicize the whole thing because it's an APC government. If they are PDP, they're frustrated. There are people who are not particularly well trained to deliver, so they cannot get what they don't have, and so on and so forth. So, so many of these things are all interrelated, but I can tell you, particularly at the federal level, connected to the states, we're doing our very best. And I have to report to Nigerians that, for fairness, every single state in this country has a focal person. That focal person is appointed by the executive governor, and he is literally the chief implementer of this program. We just plan them here, and the president said fund it, and the implementation is directly in the state. So it is a new way of doing things, a new way of fighting poverty, and the best part of it is that the NSIP is under a ministry. So it's very difficult for it to die off, uh, just like the, 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 the programs before, like PIP, uh, NALDA, and uh, all this, uh, NAPEP, and so on and so forth. This is here to stay, in my opinion, and it is working, and Nigerians should be excited to sustain it, whoever comes next after the president. Indeed, be beautiful way to start this uh, conversation. But, but I would like to follow up with asking you, uh, you talked about fairness and transparency, and that's where I'm going, my question is going to come from. Can you explain to us some of your model things? Because many will say the program is concentrated to maybe one area across the country. You know, people have a lot of suggestions around this. And some even talk about corruption and all of that. So how do you check all of this to make sure that, yes, you get to those that really need this funds, particularly like the cash transfers and all of this involving money? I get asked of this question all the time. You know, Nigerians may take their decisions based on what they see on TV. And they think once you see the president going to the UK all the time, it is only United Kingdom that she visits. When you see the minister appearing in Kaduna, you think she only goes to Kaduna. Let me tell you, the techniques and the creativities in this program to ensure that it is a fail safe, fairness is automatic. Effectiveness is automatic. Targeting is automatic. Number one, if you are talking of the conditional cash transfer, there's no form to share to people to say, oh, take it to your aunties. No, it is a social register. That social register is developed by communities themselves. 
And these communities are in every single state and the FCT in this country. There, is, there, there, there are two offices in the, under the National Social Safety Net Project. One is NASCO. They are charged with the development of the social register. And every state has what we call a state of a coordinating office of this social register, every single state. And they are working hard. They are very well trained. They are identifying these households. And every state has a pool of these poor households. And it is from there that is, uh, we are mining to actually pay. And let me tell you, my good friend, there are four indices that we use to share everything we do under the NSIP. The first is equal distribution. If you have a lump number of, let's say, 2 million beneficiaries, 15% of that is taken out and is just divided by 37. And every state has an equal number. That is 15%. Then you take 40% is shared on the basis of poverty incidence. We did not develop the poverty incidence. We got the numbers from the Bureau of Statistics. Lagos has the lowest poverty incidence. Sokoto has the highest in this country. So on that basis, for that particular index, Sokoto will get the highest and Lagos will get the lowest. The third index is population. And we got the population estimates from the National Population Commission. And on that basis, Lagos and Kano will get the highest and then states like the FCT and Bielsa and so will get the lowest on the basis of population. Then the number of local governments and so on and so forth. So it is very, very scientific. And once the number is fixed there, that particular number of beneficiaries must go to that state. Now, the second thing is every state, the implementation is done by the state. The focal person is a state person, is appointed by the governor. He is the one who has the cash transfer officer, the national home growth school feeding program manager, the empower program manager, and the Jeep program manager. They are all in the state. Every single delivery is actually going through these people. So again, you are not going to start saying, oh, some people are getting bigger and, and so on and so forth. But I know why people say this. The reason is because, you see, our honorable minister, she's from Zamfara State. So if she's going home to see her mother, she will normally call the focal person and say, focal person, I'm coming to see my mother, but I am not just going to come and see my mother. Please arrange so that I can go and see the schools where the empower people are teaching. And interestingly, the social media will follow her. Some media people will follow her. They will take pictures. And that night you will see maybe on the news or on the social media handles, honorable minister was in Zamfara. Then maybe the following weekend, she's going to Kaduna for a wedding of her friend or a political ally. And then she will still call the focal person. But I can tell you, she does that with Imo State. She does that in, in Rivers. She does that in Lagos and so on and so forth. So maybe the frequency of reporting somehow is making people feel uh, that the program is implemented in one part of the country bigger than the other part, but we have our databases, we have our files, anybody who needs everything, deployment of technology under the NSIP is number one. We have the database on the 10 million children being fed in this country is clearly there, state by state. Anybody can have access to it. The database of the 2 million people getting uh, uh, these grants from the conditional cash transfer is on our database, state by state. The database on the Jeep, people who are getting loans, is also there, they, they state by state. And we have all our uh, 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 digital uh, resources to showcase uh, th this information. So uh, literally, when you want to look for it, it is there. And, uh, but transparency, accountability, and fairness, these are the three elements that is actually driving us under the NSIP implementation team. And we see that the federal government got $500 million credit from World Bank for the initial running from 2016 to 2022, and also additional funds from the 500 billion Naira federal government budget uh, since 2016. Tell us more about funding and how much you expect to raise more funds, because this would, of course, need more money to sustain it. Well, you see, the... The, the, the first lump of money that you indicated, the loan we got from the World Bank, is actually targeting the social safety net structure, which is the conditional okay. cash transfer. Two million beneficiaries for a period of two years, 5,000 naira per household. This is not individuals, it's household. So the implementation, training, establishing uh, office structures, and other logistical requirements is actually crispy, and the program is moving 
on and on and on. For, to continue this, that program with the $500 million was actually supposed to expire by June 2022. Uh, graciously, Mr. President has further acquired another uh, lump sum of, of, of loan to continue this, seeing the impact. It is lowering poverty. It is engaging the poor and vulnerable. It is ensuring that people have got some kind of livelihood. And rural communities are actually sparking up. Remember, all the NSRP component, the payments actually go to the people directly. When you talk of Empower, the payment goes straight to the accounts of the beneficiary. You talk of school feeding, the payment goes straight to the account of the cooks. When you talk of the conditional cash transfer, the 5,000 Naira initially was being paid by cash. We saw some of the challenges. We learned, and now everybody is digitized. It goes to the account and they have their card. Now imagine every woman who is a caregiver under the conditional cash transfer, the moment they take their own 5,000, it is going to the market to go and buy Akara, to buy Dawa Dawa, and to buy Shaki, and so on and so forth. This is sparking the economy of the community. The same thing with the end power. The moment he gets his 30,000 Naira stipend per month, he's entering Kekenape. He's buying a bit of credit for his phone, and so on and so forth. He's sparking the economy. When you look at Jeep, Jeep is about giving loans to traders, trader money, young people who are roasting corn on the road, selling sugar cane, and selling tiger nuts, and so on and so forth, and market money. These women that are selling smoked fish, uh, vegetables, vitalik in the market, these are the also the moment the loan goes in, it is empowering the farmers, it is empowering the fishermen, and so on and so forth. So the whole thing, people don't understand the impact of the NSF, NSIP. Many governments in the state level are benefiting from it because it is calming the nerves of the communities. It is billions of naira actually moving into the economy and it is sparking productivity and, 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 and peacefulness. All in line with the presidential directive of lifting 100 million out of poverty in the next 10 years. So yes, uh, um, the, the, the NSIP is here. Yes, we are implementing it to the best of our ability, but in my opinion, sustaining the program, the government of Nigeria and the people of Nigeria must recognize that the one single major problem in this country is poverty. It is poverty that is generating momentum into the young people to become insurgent. It is poverty that is generating momentum into young people. So I'm even agitating for dividing this country. When you have this kind of problem, people killing people, and you see all the clips that you see in social media, it's young people carrying guns and so on and so forth. That is your major problem. And number one, you have to fund it. So funding by government on the NSRP is a must, in my own opinion. And then the other uh, supplementing funding through the international donor partners and other creative uh, thinking, which the Minister of Finance is actually working very hard on, is now secondary. But in my opinion, poverty is our major problem, and sustaining it must be first by government funding it. If you continue funding infrastructure, you continue funding insecurity, you could, and then undermining poverty, that is the source. And therefore, quenching poverty, um, I mean, I have never seen a country where you have a lot of young people who are employed, who are selling and buying things, who are making an income, and still at night after having dinner, they will say, let us go and kill people and go and steal people. I've not seen that country. So solving that problem, engendering creativity, productivity, and wealth creation in the majority of your people, which for Nigeria is in the region of 40 to 50 percent, I think is key. And therefore, national budgetary funding is key. And, uh, and I'm sure because we are working very hard, because we're showcasing efficiency, we're getting a lot of partnership from people who actually like to see efficiency. When the, the international donor partners visit the minister, they will see dashboards, they will see data, they will see evidences, and they get excited. And the next thing we see is that they want to partner with us. So we'll continue on this track to ensure that we deliver transparency, accountability, and technical delivery. And I'm sure uh, the government's uh, budgeting structure will also be sustained. Interesting conversation. Before I let you go, just tell us what are the plans, of course, programs and projections for this scheme, all things being equal as we move to the end of the year? Well, towards the end of the year, we're hoping that NPower will raise its level to probably 2 million people directly engaged, and many of them are becoming entrepreneurs to probably cross and multiply to affect more younger people. School feeding, there is a lot of effort to do with documentation to ensure that we're targeting very well. 
and we are trying to spark off farmers in the local community, small scale farmers, to be producing the food materials to feed that. We believe that this particular uh, the, uh, energy to unleash the, 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 the effects of the program will engender productivity and wealth creation and employment within the community. JIP is working very hard in, in a digitized format to penetrate the communities, give people a bit of resources to be able to actualize their entrepreneurial uh, interest. And then the conditional cash transfer is penetrating the communities, helping the poor and vulnerable to wake up again. We've seen communities where women have come together into a, a cooperative society, helping their community to build a classroom on the basis of the crossing and multiplication of the limited conditional cash transfer. We believe that this energy of employment, wealth creation, and productivity is going to push us to achieve Mr. President's target of lifting 100 million out of poverty. And the future is very bright for Nigeria with this program, but my own um, final submission is that young people take advantage of these opportunities that are there. Try to deliver your own mandate also in a very just fair and uh, with the fear of God. And I'm sure we will make our leaders proud and certainly we will make our country very proud. I am excited as you can tell, and I hope many um, are also excited so that you can come with us and let us make Nigeria great again. Thank you very much. Indeed, I'm sure beneficiaries will be happy to hear all of that. Thank you so much, Engineer Umar Binder is the national coordinator uh, the National Society, Social Investment Program, that's NSIP, National Social Investment Program. And General Mar Binderi, thank you so much for joining us from Abuja. We appreciate this. And we'll keep a tab on you, have you join us, give us updates on all of this, particularly monitoring and evaluation uh, as we move on. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.